Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC, and welcome to another Babylon video. Today we're checking out part six of our Hex Tile Grid demo video series. If you don't recall what it is that we're building, let me show it to you real quick. This is it. It is this awesome Hex Tile Grid where I can click on different hexes and I get a 50-50 shot of generating procedural islands uh, based on random values. Uh, I'm incredibly excited to uh, show you a little bit more, a little bit further about what we're going to be doing. In fact, I'm so excited. Today is actually the guts of the island. Today we're going to be looking at how we take a procedurally generated noise and put that into a node material to actually generate the island. Now, we're not going to go through detail on how to actually create the noise. What I'm using is the diamond square step algorithm. I have used this in a previous video as well. You could I can find a link for that uh, in the description down below. I'm not going to go through how to create the noise. I will kind of skim over that at a high level, but we are going to show how we use that noise to pipe into a node material. Uh, and that node material then drives the height of the island and colors it and, and stuff like that. So without any further ado, let's uh, check that out. So let's pick up right where we left off, and that's actually right here. And so uh, what I want to do is I want to show you that we're adding some code. And again, we're going to uh, blow through some of the noise stuff pretty quickly. I have some new variables here that I'm going to use to pass in to generate noise. Uh, and in the case uh, of an island, we're actually going to create noise. But in the case where there's not an island, we're still going to use the exact same node material, right? So there's a, just a generic node material for the terrain mesh for each hex. But based on whether it's an island or not, we'll, it will either get noise to generate an island, or it will get flat black, a flat black texture. And so to create the flat black texture, I'm going to do that first. Here's where I'm doing that. I create a new uh, uint8 array, and I'm going to set every value in that that's uh, to zero. Then I'm going to create a new raw texture based on that uint8 array, and then I'm going to name that new flat noise texture to be flat uh, noise texture. Uh, so here, when we actually get into the on pointer down, uh, here you'll notice that where we previously had actually, oh, I skipped a step here. Uh, notice that here I'm actually saying I'm going to have a new variable called noise texture, and it's a, an initially going to be set to flat noise texture. So now every texture by default that's loaded, excuse me, every terrain that's loaded by default will be set to flat noise texture. Uh, and then here, uh, here in the uh, part where we previously determined if there was an island or not, I would alert, hey, you've you selected an island. I've got rid of that alert, and now we're going to run, uh, create a noise array that's going to be uh, generated from the diamond square function, which we'll get to in a second. And then I'm going to take that, and I'm going to scale that. Now, the reason I scale that is because in the event that anything is way too high, the terrain is way too high, or the noise is really white, or the noise is really dark, and it's really too far below the water, the scale basically averages that out and makes sure that I always have an island that's right in the middle there. So then here's where I say that noise texture is going to be equal to a new raw texture based on the scaled noise, which is based on the noise array that we generated from the diamond square algorithm later. Uh, and then I'm going to set that to name. Now remember, this all happens only if there is an island. Okay, Only if there's an island will we actually generate noise. Uh, if we don't, then previously the noise texture is just set to flat noise. Then what we're going to do is we're going to load in the node material editor for the terrain. We're going to go through all of the meshes of the scene, uh, of the, all the meshes related or siblings of the mesh that was clicked. And we're going to say if any of them are equal to terrain, set their visibility to one as it flips over, uh, set its material to be this particular node material that we're pulling in that has inputs for the, the texture, and then set the vertex alpha to false. And then finally here, I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to create a new variable called block. I'm going to, it's going to be the noise texture uh, node inside the node material, and I'm going to set its texture input to be the noise texture, which again, if it's an island is noise, if it's not an island is just flat black. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for noise texture two. That's another node that I'll explain in a second. But this one, I'm going to give it a random rotation. I'm going to take that noise and randomly rotate it. And then I'm going to give it a U and V scale of 0.75. OK, so everything past here is where we start to get into the functions for creating noise. And again, we're not going to go into detail for this. You can definitely check out the video I did uh, on creating a terrain cube for some more info on this, but I'm not going to go into detail here. And so basically, there are four functions. 
There's the diamond square step algorithm, which calls both the diamond and square in different alternating steps. And then finally, that scaled noise, which I told you about, which kind of averages out the noise to kind of guarantee that we always or most always have an island. And so those are, there's a lot of math in here. There's a lot to go through. And again, please check it out yourself. Uh, um, definitely feel free to copy and tinker and play with it, but I'm not going to go through that here. Instead, what we're going to go do is we're going to go analyze the node material that generates the actual uh, terrain and colors it and, and basically gives it height. And you'd be surprised at how simple. There's some couple clever techniques that we're using in here, but it's pretty simple to be able to generate this. So I'm actually going to switch over away from the live scene for a second. This is the same node material that's being loaded in, but I wanted to show it to you here in this context so that we can very, very easily uh, visualize uh, with the uh, viewer here what's actually happening. So that's the actual terrain that's been generated. So all I've done is I've loaded up that node material um, uh, this node material snippet. And then I have uh, taken that texture that I'm using from the Babylon scene and piped it into this particular scene. So it's not currently hooked up to the live scene, but that's okay because we're just going to demonstrate all the principles here. So the first thing is that noise texture, that first noise texture node. Now notice that this receives in the texture and there's also a noise texture too. Now I've tried to mimic this here by giving it a random rotation and uh, basically setting, trying to set it to 0.75, uh, that's going to be pretty tricky here, but basically you get the gist. Um, I want to, again, just kind of show you the, the idea that this these values, these rotations, actually it shouldn't be rotation, should it? I lied. It should be here, 0 0.75 and here, the scale. Uh, and so basically it takes the same exact noise and it rotates it. Uh, and so here's something interesting that we're going to do. I am going to, I have this little bit of contrast here. This isn't super exciting. Basically, it's just some values you can play with, with a smooth step node to be able to kind of change the contrast of the noise. I'll just show you quickly an example of this. Uh, so I can go in and I can uh, connect this. This is the noise here. And I can uh, go in and mess around with this value and kind of decrease it or increase it. And, Nothing super, super special, just a little bit of contrast math. There's a ton of different uh, things you can Google on how to create contrast. This is the one that worked for me for now. Uh, and so I'm taking the noise out of the noise texture one and the noise texture two and piping those into contrasts uh, to basically kind of dial up the contrast to how I want it. And then check this out. Here, what I'm doing is I'm taking one minus the result of the rotated texture. So if you think about that, where I have uh, white, that has a value of one. So if I take one minus one, that's now going to be zero or black. And where previously was black, if I say one minus zero or black, that's now going to be white. So essentially what this is doing is it's inverting the noise, right? It's saying what was black is now white and what was white is now black and, and everything in between that gradient. And so essentially what I'm going to do is then multiply these two things together. Now that's really powerful. I have this noise here. The, I love the idea of multiplying the values of the textures together. So this is my contrasted noise here. This is what my contrasted noise looks like over here. It's just a little bit different. And again, I can kind of rotate this and kind of play with it a little bit. But the gist is that I take those two things and then I'm going to multiply them together. And so I end up getting some pretty cool, like see the strip of this island? It's pretty cool how that suddenly changed pretty dramatically by taking the same noise texture, inverting it, rotating it, and kind of giving this kind of cool effect. Okay. So the other thing that I'm doing is I've copied a, tr a trick, a technique that Patrick uses, Patrick Ryan uses in his using polar coordinates inside the node material editor. And you can find a link to that video down in the description down below. And you have to check it out. It's awesome. It's super, super clever. But basically what I uh, am using is the same technique here where it takes the mesh UV and it pipes it in and it basically then, uh, and I have some values that you can play with. It basically creates a radial gradient using the length. And then I create a one, uh, there's a one minus on it. So check this out. When I go connect this, this is the essentially the length of uh, the, um, the, the UV of going from white to black. Here, let me show you this. When you actually just look straight at the UV itself, the mesh UV, uh, that's not going to work. Uh, let's do it this way. Will this work? 
Uh, no, that's a, that's a texture. Okay, uh, so actually, basically what it does is it goes from uh, black to white in different directions from U and from V, right? So in one direction, in one of those, it's a vector two, so one of those, it goes from black to white in one direction, and the other is black to white in the other direction. We can take that and use that and calculate the length to basically create a... Uh, radial gradient. And then I have some parameters here that I can play with and adjust to actually tweak that radial gradient if I want to. Uh, and actually, I'm using most of that with this gradient here. If I do one minus that, it's going to flip it like we talked about. And so now, if I use this as a multiplication, you'll notice that I'm only going to limit it to what's inside of that circle. And that circle actually has fall off. So you can imagine where this is going. I get this really cool noise technique, and then I multiply it again by the circle, and we're going to create our island that way. And that's pretty exciting. That's pretty cool. So I'll take the gradient and I'll connect it up here, and you can kind of see how I can use this gradient to actually shape the how I want the islands to be. I can give it a little bit more or a little bit less, but I can use the gradient to shape it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then take the vector splitter I'm going to take the R channel and I'm going to multiply that by the noise, the combination of the, the regular noise, the inverted rotated noise together. And the result of that ends up being our noise masked by a circle. Now that is pretty cool. I hope you like that. I think that's really, really awesome. And so then of course, from there, you can imagine what we do next. We basically take that. I'm going to, in this case, multiply it by uh, a number just to kind of like stretch things out a bit and then use a gradient. And that gradient is going to then paint the color of the actual island. That is so cool. So they were using the gradient again, just like the previous video that I did on this subject to paint it. And then finally, you can imagine that I take the output of the noise texture, the second noise texture that's rotated inverted and the multiplication of the radial gradient to create the, just the section of island that I want. And then what I do is I take that value and you guessed it, I add that directly to the Y value of my mesh. And so if my mesh is here, now only where there is that white data, only where there is, or excuse me, the black and white data here, that is going to drive an addition to the height, only the height of that mesh to shape it. And so essentially then what you end up having is when you take the result of this multiplication, which actually colors based on height, based on the noise, and then you take that same noise and pipe that into the vertex output, that's what raises the island up according to the noise. And that is actually it. It's pretty simple, right? It's not that complicated. We generate a procedural noise. We use it twice, one inverting it and rotating it, multiplying that together, then use Patrick's radial gradient technique from his polar coordinates uh, video, and then multiply that again. So we just get to isolate that noise to kind of a circle with fall off. And we basically have generated island noise. That is absolutely mind boggling amazing. I. I love it. It is so cool. And it looks so amazing every time you click over and over and over again. Let me switch over. This is our final, final product. We got one more video to cover, but check this out. Just look at the result of this. You get really cool, awesome effects over and over and over again. And by the way, the reason that I had my bottom material, the material I applied to the bottom most face of the hex, I gave it a little bit of a translucency is so that you can kind of see where that island kind of goes into the sea a little bit underneath. You know how when you're looking at like the, the Caribbean, you kind of see the island and the reef past the waterline underneath. I wanted to get that effect. And so that's why that's in here. I hope you've liked this. I hope you've learned something about how you can use noise and procedural noise to generate some really, really cool effects. But most particularly, the net new thing here was how you can take that noise, layer it together, flip it, use it in different ways, and then use uh, polar coordinates or a radial gradient to then uh, further affect and multiply and isolate that into an island. Isn't that cool? I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you're enjoying this series. We've got one more video to check out before we've completed this series and then we'll be all done. Thank you so much for checking this one out. And uh, please, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to this channel so that you don't miss any future updates. And thanks again for being here. We'll see you in the next one.